Most people believe that life in America is worse than it was 50 years ago, Michael Snyder reports. If you could go back and live in 1973, would you do it? To me, that is not an easy question to answer. I think that for many of us, it would be a real challenge to adjust to, adjust to a world within without the internet and so many of other technology that we enjoy today. But I also think that if we were suddenly transported back to that time, we would be absolutely shocked by how freely people lived. In 2023, there are literally millions of different laws, rules, regulations, and ordinances that constrain how we behave down to the smallest detail. A lot of us still think that we are free, but that hasn't actually been true for a very long time. In addition, the values of our society are completely different from what they were in 1973. Over the past 50 years, our culture has been completely turned upside down, and we can see the nightmarish consequences of this cultural evolution all around us. Of course, there was no time in U.S. history when life was perfect, but when Pew Research recently asked people if life in America is better, worse, or about the same as it was 50 years ago, an overwhelming majority of respondents said that life is worse today. The survey showed Americans in a negative view on how life is for people now. They were asked, in general, would you say life in America today is better, worse, or about the same as it was 50 years ago for people like you? Over half, 58%, said they, be they believe life is worse for people like them than it was 50 years ago. And that reflects a 15-point increase from the 43% who said the same in July 2021. Only 23% they believe, they believe said they believe life is better and 19% said it's about the same. Needless to say, if many of us had to pick the best years in American history, 1973 would not be among the top few choices. The economy was really struggling and the fashions were absolutely horrible. But if you watch the 1973 street footage from New York City, you can see that life was pretty good and people seemed to be pretty happy. What I want to trade my current life for life in 1973? No, but if I could trade the people and values of 73 for the people and values of 23, I would do that in a heartbeat. Our society is falling apart all around us, and that's because the character of this nation has been fundamentally transformed. Crime rates spiking in major cities, as streets filled with uh, drugs, biggest crooks of all time walking in halls of power, and in addition, we live in a time when millions of Americans are afraid to leave their homes because our society is literally uh, teeming with predators. For example, the next time a hotel manager tells you that he wants to check in on you, it may not be because he's concerned about your air conditioning unit. A manager at the Hilton Hotel in downtown Nashville has been charged with aggravated burglary and assault after he reportedly entered a guest room I can't believe this. Now, major, uh, the, according to Major Metro Police, 23-year-old David Neal was the night manager at downtown Nashville's Hilton Hotel, located 100 blocks of 4th Avenue South. And police said he allegedly made a card key and used it to enter the guest room. And the guest told police that he woke up and immediately confronted Neal, recognizing him as a person who had come into his room the day before with another employee, to address an issue the guest was having with his TV, according to investigators. So there are millions of others just like him all over the country. And some of them even get in, got invited to the White House. Of course, it's debated whether we have a country at this point because we essentially have no southern border, thousands upon thousands of migrants illegally entering UK every, the US every single day, and it's not just causing enormous issues on the border. In the state of Indiana, approximately 22% of all students in the public school receive lessons in both English and Spanish. But it's not just a problem in the border states. Take Indiana, for example, where Indianapolis police have just declared the capital city a sanctuary for the invasion. Wish reported last year across Indiana there are nearly 78,000 students called English learners who receive lessons in both English and Spanish. The number of English learners in Indiana schools has increased by almost 27,000 from six years ago. FAIR estimates that 22% of Indianapolis students are LEPs, learners of English um, language. 
Now, and, and now that Title 42 is expiring, the surge of migration that we have been witnessing is likely to become an avalanche. Tens of thousands of migrants reportedly surging into the U.S. at the U.S.-Mexico border ahead of Title 42's expiration. In the Texas border city of El Paso, about 2,200 migrants are currently camped or living on the streets a few blocks from major ports of entry that connect El Paso with the Mexican city of Juarez. The city is prepared to open up shelters next week if needed at two vacant school buildings and a civic center. So the pace of societal change is only going to accelerate even more in the years ahead. I just wish that things would go back to the way they once were. We live at a time where almost everything is corrupt. For example, if I ordered a chicken sandwich at a restaurant, I want them to give me a piece of meat that comes from a dead chicken. But instead, our chicken-based products often contain fillers such as seaweed and wood pulp. Fried chicken is a favor for millions of Americans, but many of the option, options offered by America's biggest food chains contain other unexpected ingredients. These restaurants will often fill their food with additives, preservatives, and even other proteins in order to keep costs to a minimum and give their offerings uh, a, lower shelf life, a longer shelf life. Others may use buzzwords such as premium or all-white meat to describe their poultry-based offerings. But more surprising ingredients such as beef, seaweed, and even a wood pulp can be found in the recipe for some chicken-based products at major restaurants. And don't even get me started on the meat glue that is used to hold many of our meat products together. The reason so many people eat organic today is because they want to eat like people did 50 or 60 years ago. In fact, many of the movements that we are witnessing right now are simply attempts to recapture what life in America was once like. We have lost so much that we're losing even more with each passing day. But there are still many of us that remember how great America was in the old days, and we simply are not willing to stand by and just accept the news versions, the new versions of America that's now being forced upon us. This is by Michael Snyder. He says about the author, my name is Michael, and my brand new book entitled End Times is now available on Amazon. In addition to my new book, I've written six other books that are available on Amazon, including Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End and Living a Life That Really Matters, Commissions Earned. When you purchase any of these books, you help to support the work that I'm doing. And one way that you can really help is by sending copies as gifts to family and friends. Time is short and I need help getting these warnings into the hands of as many people as possible. And I have also started a brand new Substack newsletter I encourage you to subscribe so that you won't miss any of my articles. I have published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream and the Most Important News, and the articles that I publish on those sites are republished on dozens of other prominent websites all over the globe. I always freely and happily allow others to republish my articles on their own websites, but I also ask that they include this about the author section with each article. The material contained in this article is for general information purposes only, and readers should consult licensed professionals before making any legal, business, financial, or health decisions. I encourage you to follow me on social media, Facebook and Twitter, and any way that you can share these articles with others is definitely a great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God gives us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, I strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. And this is on the Economic Collapse blog by Michael Snyder. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.